Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another dark reaction. I'm about to watch episode 3. And what happened on the episode 2? We saw the search parties for Mikael. And there was a new person in this episode. He was carrying a suitcase. He had a black coat. And he was watching this search party for Mikael. Uh, his face was covered in dirt, he had a little beard, some relatively long hair and like I said he was very interested in the search party uh, he found a dead bird on the ground, he picked it up and examined it I guess it's interesting to find a dead bird for that person and we also saw the medical examiner explaining Charlotte what she found on the dead boy um, the boy of course had the burns around his eyes and the examiner also said boy's eardrums were damaged and the grains in his ear canal uh, the parts of your ear that helps you with balance was completely displaced like and it can happen when you spin with extreme force I guess so someone burnt this kid's eyes and spin him around like too fast until his ears were damaged and they didn't really get much information about this dead kid uh, Ulrich was still searching the caves and he found a metal door that a door he couldn't open and he saw a warning sign on the door it was a nuclear warning sign like that yellow sign so it's something related to power plant and now Ulrich wants to get inside the power plant to search it and Charlotte was going to try to get a search warrant of course it's not easy to get a search warrant for a nuclear power plant it's a high security area um, we also saw Ulrich's father, he was trying to clean something red from his uh, clothes. It can be blood, it can be uh, dirt, because they found uh, some kind of dirt around that dead boy. And so Ulrich's father has something to do with that dead kid. We also know another person definitely related to this events and that is Charlotte's husband also Jonas's uh, therapist because in the first episode he was freaking over something when he was talking to Charlotte on the phone in the second episode we saw him crying in his car listening to the radio news about the Mikael's disappearance so these two have something to do with what's going on but we have no idea what it is we also saw that person, the other person, not the first one with the suitcase, but a different person with a raincoat coming out of the caves, I think twice in this episode. So we have one stranger with a suitcase watching the uh, search party and another stranger with a raincoat going in and out of the cave for something. Um, what else we, we saw? Uh, I think Charlotte got a search warrant for the nuclear power plant, but Alexander, uh, I think he he's the one uh, responsible for the power plant. He managed to cancel it somehow because it's a, of course, high risk, high security area. So even the search warrant was not enough, and we saw Ulrich trying to get inside, like uh, trying to convince Alexander to let him search the grounds, Alexander, uh, we know now that Alexander is definitely hiding something because he was in his office talking to Obendorf, uh, Eric's father, about something they needed to get rid of that day before the police shows up. Obendorf actually didn't want to do it because he was worried police might be watching him because of Eric, but he was intimidated by Alexander. So he ended up agreeing to do it. We saw Alexander and some workers in power plant loading some barrels into a truck. 
we don't know what's inside those barrels but I guess that's the stuff they need to get rid of or hide at least um, Ulrich was also suspecting Obendorf because now Eric's disappearance and they found some tire tracks that may be from Obendor's van so he went to Obendor's junkyard to look around a bit and uh, he found a bag full of drugs and uh, that's what he was looking for uh, we saw that person with the raincoat dragging Eric's dead body in the forest in the middle of the night so he killed Eric too just like he killed that little boy and now he's going to leave Eric's body out there to be found just like he did with the other dead boy but we don't know if he was the one who kidnapped Mikael because we never saw him with that scenes in the room they kept Eric in uh, we saw that stranger with the suitcase renting a room in the hotel and he had all these weird papers, books about time travel spread all over his room. He had a different, like a weird looking device in his suitcase. And he also had a newspaper page saying, where is Mikael? And he actually crossed out the where and changed it to when. When is Mikael? So that's how we learn Mikael traveled through time he didn't disappear he went to a different time period and the stranger knows about it we saw Mikael getting out of the cave to a different forest it's definitely changed it's not the one he got inside there was no chair like the couch in the entrance the forest looked different and Mikael went to his home at least that's where his home is in his timeline and there was old cars around some old bikes he tried to get inside the house his key didn't work and a young boy opened the gate and that it was Ulrich Ulrich was living in that house with his parents as a kid and we also saw Katarina coming to pick up Ulrich for school so Mikael met his parents as young kids and then he saw a newspaper on the ground talking about Chernobyl and newspaper was from 1986 exactly 33 years ago so there is something with the number 33 because Ulrich's brother was went missing 33 years ago now Mikael is back 33 years ago in time and now we know that there are some people who knows about time travel like this stranger in the hotel he knows about time travel he even knows Mikael did travel through time and of course now Mikael knows about it even if he doesn't really understand he's a little killed kid of course he's not going to understand what happened but that person with the trench coat also going in and out of the cave he definitely knows time travel he may be even doing time travel I mean it's not like he's going inside the cave to do a cave exploring he definitely is using it to travel through time and there was a map Jonas found in his father's workshop I guess Mikhail Kamal was also investigating the cave because he had a map he made himself and on the map there was a writing asking where is the crossing so Mikhail Kamat knew about the cave he knew about the time travel and he was possibly looking for where in the cave you need to go to cross to a different timeline he was searching for it maybe he didn't find it maybe that's why he killed himself he was maybe obsessed with it but we know some people are aware of this time travel now and that's all I can say about episode 2 and I really enjoy the way this show is going I'm I can't wait to watch this episode so let's jump into it then we can talk even more about this all right dark season 1 episode 3 and let's go Mama? 
that's not your mama, that's your grandma. And she thought that was Matt's. This must be right after Mess what went missing. Yeah, she is She's in a terrible shape. And poor Mikael, he now he's scared. He's confused, he has no idea what's going on. This is his house and his parents are not there. Past and present. Yeah, then now we have two timelines with Mikael and our other people we have been following. Ines Conwald? Ines. This is Jonas' grandmother. Ines Conwald, yeah. In 33 years ago, she's. I guess she was a nurse. Again, with the dead birds. Do these birds die because of the time travel? Now, Mikael came here and birds died. Why are you taking the dead bird? They are looking for meds, but no evidence. Just like Eric and Mikael. Tiedemann. Who was Tiedemann? Uh, Alexander Tiedemann. Bartosz, right? And the lady running the hotel. No, that's the school Jonas was going. Oh, Mikkel. What is he doing in the school? Or maybe he's looking for his brother and sister now. He couldn't find his parents. Hannah. Oh, that's Hannah? And Katharina. Oh, he is looking for his mother. She was principal, but now <laughs> his mother is right in front of him. Poor kid has no idea what's going on. He's too young. Claudia. Oh, she's the boss of the power plant? Helge, uh, the old guy who was running away from the retirement home. Oh, yeah, his ear, scar on his face. That's the old guy, okay. So he was security in power plant. Hit right. <laughs> no future. Oh, it's not just birds. It's also killing sheep. Vergiftet? Gestern sind sie noch rumgesprungen. 
Was die Sache mit dem Jungen und jetzt das hier. Das hätte sie früher nicht gegeben. Der tötet ihn einfach 33 Schafe. Ein 33 Sheep. Seht zu, wachet und betet. Denn sie wissen nicht, wann die Zeit kommt. Markus Evangelium 1333. 1333. They keep bringing 33. But if it's killing sheep, that whatever is happening must be really powerful, like electromagnetic blast or something. I don't know if they can kill animals, but. So she's. Uh, what was her name? The lady running the hotel? Alexander Bartosz. Hidaman, she's Bartosz's grandmother, and she was running the power plant back in the day. Is something wrong with the numbers? Are they stealing from something? And he's also a Tidaman. <laughs> Michael now looking for his father. He doesn't work here yet. So what are these people going to think about Michael like? Uh, he thinks it's a joke, it's a prank. Oh yeah, Michael is really hurt, they need to take him to a hospital. And someone needs to come save this kid before they send him to a foster home. Welches Jahr? 1986. 1986. Oh God. This must be terrifying for your little kid. What are they going to do with him? Oh, they are calling like child protective services or something that does mean I'll take care of oh he thinks Ulrich beat up this kid and send him to a police station Tronte. Uh, Ulrich's father, Tronte. Oh, I guess cheating runs in the family with Ulrich and Tronte. Maybe he's calling the cell phone numbers of his parents. Okay, I'm just gonna take this. And that's his uncle that he never met. Okay, 
This is one week after Matt disappeared. Matt and Ulrich Nielsen. Okay. He's about to be taken. Oh, that's why they showed her. They are going to take him to the hospital for his injuries. At least he didn't go missing, he ended up in the police station and now they are going to take care of him in the hospital. And like I said, I hope someone comes take him before they find a foster home for this kid. This is music coming from Ulrich's room, yeah. Oh, those are the toy, Matt's toys. No future. Did he write that no future to power plant? So Ulrich was maybe a problem child in the town. That's why Cup doesn't like him. What is that? Is that? What is that? A hoof. That sees man now. What did that off the beach say? That's your visa. Oh no! <laughs> okay, well, he's getting in a lot of trouble now. And then Matt's vielleicht schon wieder hier. Ja, sieh doch mal. Die Tür war offen. Nee, Matt. Er hat ja den Schlüssel vergessen. Ab Kommissar Tiedemann möchte dir den neuesten Ermittlungsstand mitteilen. Es gibt nämlich neue Erkenntnisse. Hm? Eben. Gar nichts haben sie. Jetzt verpissen Sie sich gefälligst. So already was I guess in trouble with the cops often, and obviously he hates the cops uh, since they can't find anything about his brother, and all his mother is already in a terrible state. No, that's Helge. This is Helge's father. Bernd. Wolltest du mir das einfach unterjubeln? Ich habe dir gesagt, wenn es Leichen im Keller gibt, dann muss ich das wissen. Es gibt Dinge, die lohnt es sich zu wissen, und es gibt Dinge, die lohnt es sich nicht zu wissen. Oh no, yeah, she said something was off with the numbers. Ist das? Diese Werte haben nichts mit den Meldewerten zu tun. Hier. Und hier. Überall. Das geht seit drei Monaten so. Weißt du, was sich seit Tschernobyl verändert hat? Die Leute haben das Vertrauen verloren in uns, in die Kernenergie. Sie haben die Bilder gesehen. Das geht nicht mehr aus ihren Köpfen raus. Aber Angst. Is something going wrong in the power plant, the reactor, and he's covering it up? Und? Wie viele Leute hier in der Gegend leben vom AKW? Wir haben 612 Angestellte, exklusiv. Alle. Und wenn du morgen diesen Posten hier antrittst, trägst du nicht nur die Verantwortung für das AKW, dann trägst du auch die Verantwortung für die ganze Stadt. Und jetzt sag mir, dass ich mich nicht in dir getäuscht habe. So Helge's father was running the power plant. Now Reg Regina, Regina's mother is taking over. But there is something off with the numbers that he was trying to cover up. And 
And who is this girl? She picked up the dead bird on the road. Oh, she's really good at drawing. Charlotte. Okay, she's the cop from the future. Oh, they are doing autopsy to ship. So what they were scared to death. Und was kann so eine Panik auslösen? Alles mögliche. Auch ein Mensch? Ein einzelner Mensch? Solange er nicht Freddy Krüger ist, muss er sich schon ziemlich ins Zeug legen. Hatte eines von diesen Schafen? No, Ul Ulrich, yeah, I know. Ulrich is innocent on this one. What did he find? Eardrums are damaged, like the dead boy in the future. Okay, whatever that means. Is she going inside the caves? To that door, maybe? The, the door Ulrich found? Oh damn. She's climbing down with a rope. Mikael is stuck here until someone com someone comes and takes him back. I mean, it's a good thing she's a really nice person taking care of Mikael, but I hope they don't put him in the system and send him off to a child foster. Oh God, he said it. Yeah, now Mikael knows and understands what happened, but of course people are not going to believe him. And she's inside the caves. What the hell? I'm pretty sure you are not supposed to store nuclear waste like this. Is this why the numbers are off? And Alexander in the future had battles like this he was trying to get rid of. Which I don't know what that means, but... Mama? Yeah, Mama is busy in a cave. Oh, what is that? Is she hurting herself? What is he investigating here? Oh, he's back to that field where they found the dead sheep. There's the sound from the cave.
O and dead bird. So it definitely happens when someone uses the cave to time travel. Lights, yeah, lights flickering, birds dying, and that sound from the cave. Oh god, that's a lot of birds falling from sky. Jesus. So he used the who used the cave this time? Mikael definitely didn't. He's still in the hospital. Maybe that guy with the raincoat. Oh, Mikael is escaping. Is he going to try to go back to the cave? Oh yeah, Mikael is going back to the cave. He's going to try to find that place. He traveled through time. But I'm assuming it was a mistake. And the caves are supposed to be quite complicated and long tunnels. He's going in. Oh, with that lighter he stole from the police. Then we have a montage coming up. Oh, yeah, Michael ran away. But nurse found out. And yeah, that's the nurse from... Uh, Jonas's grandmother, Ines Kamart. Tronte was cheating on his wife, just like Ulri is doing with Katarina. Oh, I love how they show the past and present version of people. I don't think we saw her in the future. Claudia Oh, that's the book A Journey Through Time The Stranger in the Hotel Has this book Yeah, that's the I, I keep forgetting her name Bartosz's mother. Is he checking for a lump, like breast cancer? And Charlotte with her creepy dead birds and grown up Charlotte again with the same birds. Okay, she definitely remembers it and she said before things just like 33 years ago Mulder's mother oh and old Tronte is not in home again Oh, that's mad bad. And Mickey has bad now. God. This guy's brother went missing. Now his son went missing. Oh, what's this? What is Ulrich doing? Oh, he's going back in the cave? He's going to f try to force open that door. 
Oh, and Mikkel is inside the cave too. What if they find each other? Oh god, I hope they find each other. Oh shit. Oh god. This kid is keep getting injured. But Mikael can't go through this door, like... If Ulrich can't even open it, how did... Mikael went through that door? Yeah... He can't even pry it open, like, with the crossbar, whatever it is. Oh, they can he hear each other, or it just Mikkel. Oh shit, he can definitely hear Mikkel. He didn't recognize the voice. So he just heard something. Oh, he said, Mikael. Uh, how the fuck this thing works? No, oh, they are both coming out of the cave. It's just 33 years difference. Oh, poor kids. Who is this person now? You are getting a new character? Oh, that's the, uh, what was it, device, the guy in the hotel head, in a suitcase. Did he repair it? What the hell? I guess that's the end of the episode. Alright guys, that was the Dark Season 1, Episode 3. It was a great episode, I really enjoyed it, I did my best to understand pretty much anything they said, I hope I didn't miss anything important, but let's start talking about what happened in this episode. We started from where we left with Mikkel, uh, he's now in 1986, right in front of his house, he goes inside, of course trying to find his parents, but there is his grandmother, he didn't recognize the grandmother, of course, and the grandmother thought that was mad. She is, of course, of course, devastated because her son went missing just a week ago, and she didn't really, uh, she wasn't really in her right mind, so she didn't understand what was going on. Mikhail, of course, got even more confused, and then we saw a girl riding her bicycle in the forest road she found a dead bird picked it up put it in her backpack we then later find out that charlotte our police officer in the future uh, we also saw claudia uh, claudia tiedemann driving the car with her daughter 
and Regina, Regina Tiedemann. I mean, you know, Regina is the lady running the hotel. Her husband Alexander is now running power plant, and their son is Bartosz, Jonas's uh, best friend. So we got a lot of of our future characters, uh, past versions, 33 years younger or earlier versions. Now, and uh, it looks like Claudia Tiedemann is taking over the power plant. She's going to be the boss now. She's going there, and in the door of the power plant, she was stopped by Helge, who tried to give her his best wishes about the new job. Like he even got her a present, and so he was being really nice there. But it didn't really work out for him. And he also had that scar in the face. I didn't really notice it in the first, but she said her his name, and that's how I understand this the old guy we have in the future who kind of uh, not right in the mind we saw Mikael looking for his mother in the school because Katerina is the principal in the school so Mikael went there to find her but she was stopped in the hallway by young Katerina and Hannah he asked them about the, his mother like she's principal here but of course she's not there so Mikael talk with his mother's younger version in the school and he then left the school of course can't find his mother uh, we saw then Mikael going to police station to find his father of course only he's a police officer but not in this timeline there was the cop uh, another Tiedemann but we didn't really get his name uh, he was investigating the Matt missing kid case uh, he is the one in the room where Mikael arrives he talks about his father Ulrich Nielsen and the police officer thought that was a prank by Ulrich Nielsen uh, I guess he's a troubled child with the police he thought Ulrich beat up this kid and send it send him to the police station so he called the hospital asked someone to come here and pick up the boy and he went to talk to Ulrich uh, we also saw the police Tiedemann investigating another case and apparently 33 sheep died suddenly with no sign of attack or poison uh, and exactly 33 sheep like we how Mikael went back in time 33 years so they are keep bringing 33 up I don't know why it's so significant uh, but that was also a case the police was working on but he eventually went to Ulrich's home to talk to him and we saw a no future sign on the wall of Ulrich's room we also saw the exact same sign exact same writing in the power plant so I guess Ulrich does kind of causes uh, problems around the town and gets in trouble with the police uh, police asked Ulrich about uh, Mikael about the kid of course he has no idea what's going on he also found a sheep hoof in Ulrich's room so he thought Ulrich even killed the sheep so things were getting a little heated when Ulrich's mother walked into the room and the cop had to leave now uh, we also saw some uh, interesting conversation between Claudia and the previous boss of the power plant which is Helge's father uh, we saw him and Helge in a photo on his desk but I don't know his name I didn't want to look up any names even if I use the official Netflix website I I'm trying to remember the names now and Claudia asked about these mistakes in the numbers in the reports of the power plant before she takes over and he was kind of talking about how entire town was making their living thanks to this power plant and how she needs to protect it so I don't know what that was about but I think he was trying to convince Claudia to hide or cover up whatever the mistakes were in the numbers but he eventually took her to a 
to caves. I, I'm assuming it's part of the winding caves. She climbed down through a hole in the ground and she found a lot of yellow barrels in there. They, I think they all had nuclear warning sign on them. And in the future, Alexander was also trying to get rid of some barrels. He was loading those barrels into a truck. I think this is the same thing that's been going on for at least 33 years. But I don't know what that means. Like, how is the numbers are off? Are they like maybe the power plant is not running as efficiently? As it's supposed to do maybe they are producing more nuclear waste and they are trying to hide it in the numbers and this is why they store these nuclear waste like this because i'm pretty sure you are supposed to store these nuclear waste in much deeper caves definitely not something people can reach with a simple rope and a little bit of walk so uh, we saw Mikel in the hospital. They took him to hospital to treat his wounds, and it looks like nothing serious happened. It's just a superficial like wounds, just cuts and bruises. They patched him up, and the nurse taking care of Mikel is Ines Kamwald, uh, Jonas' grandmother in the future, and she's a super nice person. That actually makes me feel a little bit better for Mikael because that kid is having a terrible day. Uh, but in the night when lights start flickering and obviously someone used the cave again, Mikael ran away from the hospital and he made his way back to the caves. He tried to find that place he used to travel back in time. He had a little lighter he stole from the police. And in the same time, Uri in the future was trying to open that metal gate he found in the cave. He tried to force it open. He failed. Mikael fell in the caves and hurt himself again. And when Ulrich failed to open the door, he got mad and started hitting the door with that metal crowbar. He made a lot of noise and Mikael actually heard that noise. He even shouted like, is there anyone, else? Is there anyone here? Hello, like, and... Ulrich in the future heard those noises. He didn't really recognize the voice, but he definitely heard it. He even said, like, Mikael, like, is someone there? Mikael is it like you. So whatever this place is, I'm assuming, like, both Ulrich and Mikael were really close to that spot they need to be in order to cross between timelines so they could actually hear each other even if they couldn't see each other. So I don't know if it's, like, something, a place that, is behind the metal door and Mikael somehow went through that door I don't know how because Ulrich couldn't even force it open but this episode had a lot of information we saw pretty much like half or most of our characters 33 years ago how they were what kind of lives they were living back in the day and they even had a really cool montage where they show the past and present time of our characters. For example, Tronte, Ulrich's father, was cheating on his wife with Claudia Tiedemann. So I guess cheating runs in the family because <laughs> Ulrich is cheating on his wife now. Uh, young Hena and Ulrich had a scene in the bus setup when the lights were flickering and stuff was happening. I guess Hena had a thing for Ulrich from that age and Ulrich apparently hated this town so much that he wished it didn't exist uh, now we spent this almost entire episode in 1986 33 years ago we saw how things were similar in the sense of like this time travel stuff like how lights flickering birds dying kids going missing uh, so whatever is happening I guess happened back in the day too and we all oh, right right at the ending scene I think that was really important we saw a new character working on some kind of device and that's the device the stranger in the hotel had in a suitcase uh, but his version of the device was like really beat up like it was 
plague like burn broken I guess but the device this person had was working maybe it's the same device maybe this guy repaired it so whatever it is they brought it up in the last scene of the episode so I'm definitely going to keep that in mind I'm assuming this is something uh, that's going to come back it's going to be important but we didn't really see our stranger or the guy with the raincoat uh, we only saw what happened to Mikkel and what's been going on in the past in 1986 uh, with the power plant and the police and the stuff but I really enjoyed this episode this show is definitely doing a amazing job telling the story slowly not rushing it like giving me time to understand and follow what's going on and definitely makes me feel for the characters like Mikael in this episode I felt terrible for this kid and the kid the actor did a really great job portraying what Mikael was feeling in this and I definitely felt that but like I said I'm enjoying this show a lot and I can't wait to watch even more of it and thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.